there we go. Steve here in the Down to Earth Woodworking Shop doing a little finishing today. I'm using shellac which is a great finish. A lot of reasons for it but as I always say once you shellac you'll never go back. The only thing about shellac that I don't like is the length of time that it takes to get the shellac flakes to dissolve in the alcohol and how you really have to plan ahead for your finishing. Mixing shellac is really quite easy. Typically you'll make a pound cut, a one pound cut, a two pound cut, three pound cut, etc. Which means in a two pound cut it's the equivalent of two pounds of shellac flakes in one gallon of denatured alcohol. And of course there are formulas, you can find them anywhere on the internet, for reducing those quantities. However many ounces you want to start with for the alcohol will relate to how many weight ounces of shellac flakes you'll put into those fluid ounces of alcohol. Typically though what you'll do is you'll take your flakes, weigh them out, I use a little digital scale, after you get those flakes weighed out then you'll measure the appropriate amount of alcohol, pour that into the container that you're going to use and mix in the flakes. Then after you put the lid on, shake it a little bit and let the flakes dissolve. And what most people will tell you is that every few minutes give it a shake. Well, what they don't tell you is that every few minutes might go on for 24 hours. And as soon as you let that sit, those flakes will sink to the bottom of the container. Sometimes they will go ahead and dissolve sometimes they'll clump up into a big mass in the bottom of the jar. Then you'll need to get a stir stick and get those clumps broken up and loose again and shake and wait and shake and wait and shake and wait and it can take a long time. The last batch I mixed up took over 24 hours for all the flakes to dissolve in the alcohol and that was only a two pound cut. Had it been a three pound or heavier cut it would have taken even longer for all those flakes to dissolve. And that's okay if you can plan ahead in your finishing. But uh, I would like a faster way to mix my shellac flakes and I didn't really want to spend a couple of hundred dollars on a mixer so I've come up with something that you can do in your shop. It's a fun little project and only take, uh, you know, a couple of hours and maybe $15, $20 worth of parts. So let's take a look. Now to build this little project, the first thing we're going to need is a motor of some type. This is a fan that's intended for use in a computer, a cooling fan. Uh, you may have an old computer laying around with uh, a fan in it or you can purchase one of these. I picked this up for five dollars. It has all kinds of connections here. I'm not sure what all those are for but we'll figure that out. Then you're going to need a power supply. Now this is a 12 volt fan so I found this old 12 volt transformer plug-in wall wart uh, it was with an old modem that I don't use anymore, so this didn't cost anything, but we're going to use this for our power supply. And uh, then we're going to put a couple of rare earth magnets on this motor so that they spin around and will spin the stir bar. And there's two rare earth magnets there, which I had in the shop. And these are the spin bars. I got two sizes of them. They're a piece of ferrous metal encased in a material called PTFE, which appears from everything I've read to be impervious to almost anything. So the alcohol and shellac mix should not mess with these, these bars. They should be inert. And this bar will drop down into the glass container with the shellac alcohol mix, the motor will turn the magnets, the magnets will turn the bar, and it will stir our solution. 
Now just to make it a little bit fancier, I decided to try to put a variable speed control in. This is a 12 volt variable speed rheostat that I picked up for a couple of bucks and it has a detent for off, on, and then you can turn it all the way up. Not sure this is going to work, but we'll try it out and we'll see. And then last but not least, we need something to put all this in. This is a project box from Radio Shack. This cost uh, $7. And we'll put everything in this box, which will give us a place to set the glass container, a place for the switch, and it'll turn on and spin and stir our shellac. At least that's the plan, so let's see how it goes together. Okay, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure this stuff works and that I know which wires are which. So we've got our little transformer here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip off this little plug on the end and we'll get rid of that. And then I'm going to strip just a tiny bit of wire. Now I'm going to plug in this transformer and I'm just going to touch these wires to this connector to see if I can figure out which way this fan is spinning and if it's working correctly. Okay, that didn't do it. There we go. Alright, so now we know that this wire that has the white stripe on it is going to get connected to the red wire on the fan. And that makes the fan spin. So that's good. Now what I want to do is I want to test this variable speed unit and see how this is working. So this plugs together and the red wire is this wire here on this end. So let's turn this on and we'll turn it all the way up and we'll connect this. Alright, so the red wire here is also going to be the wire with the stripe here. Now let's see if the variable speed works. Oh yeah, that works. So now we know our connections. The wire the black wire from the transformer with the white stripe will be connected to the red wire on the variable speed controller and that will take care of everything. So the next thing that's important to do is to attach the magnets to the center section of this fan. We want to attach one magnet here and one magnet here. So that seems like a pretty good spot for this. I want to make sure that it's relatively uh, even so that the fan is not out of balance as it's turning. These little magnets are tiny but they do have some weight to them. So now that those are in, in place, I want to take a pencil and sort of mark that spot so that when I go to attach these magnets I'll know where to put them. I'm going to use a little dab of super glue to hold these magnets in place. Trying to get the glue all over my fingers. There's one. And there's the other. And we'll let that set up for just a couple of minutes. Got the fan uh, pretty much in the position that I'd like. Let me use this uh, little tool here to mark some indentations in the plastic. Use a 3 16 inch bit drill pilot holes. And we're going to use 832 by inch and a half long machine screws. And we're going to insert these from the top side of the box and on the back side put on a lock washer and a nut. and tighten that down. And that will form a stud sticking up for the fan to mount on. It's 
So let's go ahead and put in the rest of these. So now we want to take the fan, magnet side down, and slip that over the screw posts. Okay, now the fan is mounted. The fan is mounted in the box. Just need to put a couple of nuts on here and that'll hold the fan in place. Now, with the number eight machine screw, the lock washer and the nut, that's holding the fan with the magnets attached just below the surface of this box so it can still spin freely. So we'll put the nuts on. Okay, the fan is attached in the box now. The magnets are attached to the fan. Before we finish this little project up, let's just uh, start making a couple of electrical connections here and make sure that everything is still working. So we know what our polarities are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this end of this plug off. We don't need this. Don't have a computer to connect it to. And I'm going to strip back these wires and I'm going to connect these temporarily to this power supply just to assure that everything is working properly. Alright, the black wire with the white stripe to the red wire on the variable speed power control and the two black wires together. Make sure we don't short those out. Now let's plug it in and see how this is working. Okay, the fan is turning. And I'll turn the speed up. So now let's see whether or not we're going to spin anything. And that looks like that's going to work. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to make a hole for this knob. I'd like to put it somewhere here pretty close to the center. Um, see if we can get close here. That should be close enough for jazz. Now I'm going to take this piece of paper and put it in here. Just to keep some of the drilling chafe off the fan. And we'll drill a little hole through here. Alright, so that's going to house this. A little knob will stick through there. And then we need a small hole over on this side just to run the wires through. For this we'll just use the same 3 16 inch bit that we used before. So now we have the end of our power supply line. I'm just going to feed that through this hole. And I'm going to take and put a knot in it just to keep it from pulling through the hole. That should do it. So I've got a little bit of shrink tubing here. You could use electrical tape to be just fine. slip that over the wire. Now I'm going to take and connect these wires. Now you could solder this if you want to. I don't know that there's really any need to do that. I'll just twist it together real good. Fold it down. Push the shrink tape over it. And then you can just use a lighter. Don't burn it. Just a little bit of heat and that'll shrink that right into place. And there we go. Got a good solid connection there. Okay, so I've just got a little uh, cheap hot melt glue gun here and I'm gonna dab a little glue on this thing and attach it hopefully somewhere in the center of that hole. And there we 
go. So the last step now before we uh, button things up is to neaten up this wiring so it doesn't get in the way or interfere with the fan. So to do that, we'll just grab a couple of wire ties and we'll be all set. You think this wire tie is big enough? <clears throat> it's just the first one I grabbed. And there we go. So now we'll put the cover on. Let's see how it works. Ah, there we go. Now let's try a real life experiment. Okay, I've got a little mixing vessel. Got some fluid in there. We'll drop in our little stir bar and let's see if we can stir. Oh, and there we go. We even got a little vortex funnel forming there. So if you'd like to mix your shellac or any other finish automatically, this is a quick and easy to build magnetic stirrer for the wood shop. Thanks for watching. This is Steve and I'll see you next time in the down to earth woodworking shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.